Dr. Matt Robinson here again with you from ReadyVet. Uh, today we are looking at dealing with wounds. These are common. Re this is a common reason people ring us up after hours. Dogs have had a fight, or they've run around like a goose and injured themselves, and they've got a wound. Um, it's nice to know some of the basics to be able to clean a wound, uh, wrap it up, protect it, stop it drying out. Uh, perhaps until the vet's open or until they're available until you can get to the vet or um, just because lots of minor wounds might be able to be dealt with without any veterinary intervention at all. Um, so I've got a few basic things here. It's not likely that many people will have a bag of saline but this is one option for flushing a wound. Another reasonable option is a chlorhexidine solution. Sometimes you might see the hospital stuff as blue, ours is pink. Um, so this is a 0.05% solution of chlorhexidine. You can use a 0.1% solution, solution of iodine. It's a bit controversial whether we should be putting antiseptics into wounds, but usually in a dog, they're dirty wounds. And so often we like to, we've got uh, some that we make up fresh every week. 0.05% um, chlorhexidine solution. Um, tap water is fine, really. If you've got nothing else, get tap water in there, it's fine. I've cut myself open recently and just got the water in there. It was mud and it managed to get rid of most of the dirt and mud and then went to hospital. They did use a lot of saline. So um, usually, like I said, in dogs, dirty wounds, we want a bit of antiseptic solution. That's good. And so here's our mock wound here on our dog. He had a general anaesthetic a week or two ago for a dental and so it's, this is an easy spot to bandage. You can bandage most spots on the animal. Sometimes it means you have to wrap the bandage right around the animal. Um, just be aware when you're bandaging a limb that you're not doing it too tight because you might tourniquet the limb, you might stop blood getting down to the foot. More commonly, you'll stop blood getting back from the foot, the foot will get swollen. If that's the case, you can bandage the entire limb, including the foot. That's often what we would do, even for a, limb up, a wound up here. So our first step is getting rid of the hair from around the wound, ideally, oh no. Step number one is washing your hands. Wash your hands really well, ideally with a surgical scrub solution. If you can't wash your hands, then pop on some examination gloves because we don't want to introduce bacteria from your hands, staph, typically, into the wound. This is the whole idea is that we're trying to be as clean as possible. We're trying to reduce gross contamination, anything you can see that is, any organic material, dirt, mud, bits of stick, leaves, etc. So that's where the flushing comes in, also to remove microscopic stuff, bacteria, that sort of thing. So getting rid of the hair, it might be necessary to moisten the wound a little bit first. Have everything ready. Stuff will fall on the floor when you're working with animals. It's very common. So we can either flush the wound directly, get our little spray bottle in here, one we prepared earlier, give it a good flush. So we've got a bit of, a bit of clean up happening. It doesn't really matter what order you're doing things in, but then if you are clipping the hair from around the side, then try and be careful not to contaminate the wound further with hair. Sometimes it's good to put a bit of water-based lubricant in the wound. If you've got a bit of KY jelly, uh, then you can pop it in the wound while you get rid of the hair and then any hair will stick to that and then you can flush that out later. Even scissors work quite well, especially with hairy dogs. Just cut the hair back. Wounds don't like hair. The immune system gets a look at hair, wants to attack it, get rid of it. It's like a foreign body. You get strong reactions to ingrown hairs, ingrown toenails, that sort of thing get rid of it from around the wound, it'll keep it nice and clean. Then it's time to flush and with some swabs, you can just give it a little flush, little flush, 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 and you can see he's tolerating that quite well. Isn't he good? Painful wound, hey? And he's tolerating it really well. Give him a treat. Treats are good. If you haven't got sedatives and pain relief and anesthetics and things like we do, treats, have someone holding a treat, you might get a bit further. So we're just cleaning it as best we can. You can't really overdo it. Flushing, flushing, flushing. Or if you have got a bag of saline or even the little squeezy things, uh, you can just cut them off. You're gonna make a mess, that's fine. We've got staff here that clean that up. Or you might have to clean it up yourself. Um, so hang on, let me just stop this bag from making more mess. 
put that there like that. You can save that for later on. That's perfectly reasonable. So now we've given it a good flush. We're going to just apply a basic dressing. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It really doesn't. You don't need expensive dressings. A packet of swabs, a hundred swabs will cost you three or four bucks. At any vet surgery, they'll generally send them to sell them to you. Pop that over there like that. I did put a little bit of our worm flush solution there, a bit of saline, whatever you like to keep it a bit more moist. It's not totally necessary. And then any sort of bandaging material is good. And it's that simple, just wrap it up. So you're achieving a couple of different things. You're protecting the wound, you're stopping dogs from licking the wound themselves. Lots of people have got this idea that dogs should be licking the wounds, it's better, the saliva's better, that's not correct. They're gonna cause infection if they're licking their wounds and slow healing. Um, so we're protecting the wound, we're keeping it, stopping it from drying out, but we're also closing any, any space. We wanna close down that space that's been created by the wound. Sometimes things have penetrated in under the skin. It's nice to close down that dead space, we call it, so that we haven't got any pockets where fluid and muck can accumulate. A bit of the non-sticky bandage, vet wrap we call that, and then sticky bandage over the top. And that'll really stop, stop the dogs from, from getting at it. And you can do this, like I said, anywhere you can wrap the foot. Foot wounds are very common, and it's the same process. You know, you can just flush the wound out, bottom of the foot, Stick a, few, stick a few swabs there. I often do one bandage around like that and then one around the side, another one like that, and then right around. Just make it up. The important thing is, with any wound, not too much pressure with your bandage. I'm just doing that nice and loosely. This stuff will contract a bit. It's very stretchy. So when you pull it out and wrap it around, don't have it pulled right out or it will contract down on the wound and that's not good. So, Get it all the way down. So I like to have some sticky stuff at either end. Um, sticky stuff is good. It'll be a pest to get off, but it'll keep the wound on, keep the bandage on, sorry. So first 24 hours, you'll be fine. Keep the bandage nice and clean, then change it about 24 hours later. If you've got lots of muck and stuff coming out, then you need to change it earlier. If you're seeing any strike through, we call that, any blood or tissue fluid coming out, you'd need to change it earlier. Um, once you haven't got too much fluid being generated, you could change it again after two days and then you could go to three days and probably a maximum of four days, especially if you're keeping it clean and dry. So there are your basics of wound management. Isn't he a lovely model, dog the dog? Thanks, dog. All right, cheerio.